Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. Um, I have been out this morning with my son, Steven, who uh, you'll see in a couple minutes when we switch vehicles. We've been running some errands and I thought I'd take you guys along with us. Um, so far today, we went to our store, offloaded some treasures that I picked up, um, and now uh, we're on our way back with something really cool in the back of the vehicle. We're gonna do a little thrift store run today and stop at the auction and check and see how things are going with the monster setup over there for our August 21st auction. So follow along on today's video as we uh, run a few errands together. I keep the old ambulance around because it makes a really great truck. And today we got something I think is pretty nifty in the back. Steven helped me offload it and how was it? Uh, well, just take a look at what's in the back first yeah. before I answer, as you can imagine. Yeah, this was down in their basement and they had a really steep staircase, but we got it up. This is a 1970s Charlie's Angels pinball machine. Movie themed or music themed pinball machines always carry a bit of a premium over just your standard sort of fare. So this will be a nice little addition to the shop. But we're not going to bring this in right now. Um, I don't have room for it yet. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Dad can worry about that. But I'm going to show the folks at home what we picked up this morning and what we're going to go drop off at the auction. So we'll get this locked back up and we'll head in the shop. One of the things that we had over at our other store was this random sign. It's just a sign from an old TV production company. I forgot that I had it. I worked for them when I was working for Canadian Idol for the first couple seasons there, so it's kind of funny, I guess. I'm not planning on keeping it around, but kind of neat. Um, the gentleman that I went to last night had a bunch of die-cast cars, which is what we picked up, and I'll show you that in a minute. But he was also a season ticket holder for, um, at that time it was called the Edmonton Esks, it's now the Edmonton Elks. But this is a uh, team autographed 2015 Grey Cup winning football helmet from the team. He's been a season holder for over 20 years, and so he was able to grab this and get the whole team to sign it, which is pretty neat. And uh, he was also a Doug Flutie fan um, who was in the NFL and CFL, and so that's an autographed uh, football highlighting his career. Both neat things, but not what I came in to show you. What I came to show you was down the wall, and I still have to clean all this stuff up because I barely have any room amongst the chess sets and other things. Um, but these, are 118 scale die cast cars. They're pretty big, they're about a foot long, but we've got the Munster Mobile. Well, I should say that, I think that's Grandpa's Dragula. And there's the classic Batman, but that's a special edition all in chrome finish, really neat. The uh, 32 Ford from American Graffiti. That's the Munster Mobile. Uh, the Death Mobile from Animal House. <laughs> I think that start off life as a Lincoln. I think it did. A suicide door, 60s Lincoln, and then they converted that. Uh, the General Lee, which is a difficult car to find now, and some race cars. Uh, the DeLorean from Back to the Future, and a few others. Uh, pretty neat stuff. But the, the problem is he didn't keep the boxes for anything, and that really diminishes the value. This uh, Batmobile, if it had the original box, could be over $500, if you could believe it. It's still about a $300 or $250 Canadian car now, so it's still worth picking up, but having the original packaging does make a big difference when it comes to collectibles, but he wanted to enjoy them on a shelf, and that's exactly what he did. So now I've got them on mine. But we have a whole bunch of extras that we didn't want to bring in the store that are going to auction, and that's where we have to go next. Okay, next stop, since we're kind of on the way to the auction and this is en route, we thought we'd stop in the little thrift store on the way and see if there's anything kind of cool, because you never know. Once you have the bug to find neat stuff and hidden treasures, it never gets out of your system. Okay, I'm gonna skirt kind of past all the dishes and 
so forth. Unless I guess I find vintage Pyrex because apparently that stuff sells crazy good, as I've learned. I do like to stop and look at the little knickknacks here because you never know when someone's donated uh, an antique little bronze statue or something fun. I always hope that I'm gonna find an Art Deco figural lamp. This looks like a little, uh, you know, almost like one of those Barbasol containers, but it's not, it's for pouring fluid from. Hey, look, a, an antique McCafe. Somebody left their McDonald's mug cup sitting right there. How much do you think that is? I think it's priceless. Okay. Hmm. You need a calculator for school? <laughs> Here's one. That's your ultimate senior citizen calculator right there. If it works, that would be like the funniest thing. It, no, it does work. Well, it's meant to. But the digits aren't reading properly on that one side. But uh, yeah, sorry. that is a functioning calculator. Yeah, it's just a display problem. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You should bring that to class and have that sitting out. <laughs> you know, Stephen thought that was a clown picture from a, a while. He thought it was a red nose and a green mustache or smile or something. I'm like, nah, it's a little girl smelling a rose. Uh, Perspective is everything. It just makes me look like a clown. There, a lot of times people bring these in and they think it's real painting because it's textured, but it's textured cardboard. And I have to give them the bad news that what they thought was an original painting is, in fact, not. Sometimes there's decent art that shows up in the uh, thrift bins. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Nothing like adding the uh, threat of kicking the bucket. I love you so much I could croak. Yuck, yuck, yuck. More of these little statues. Every time I seem to come to this thrift shop, there's these little paper mache statues. Okay. This is a perpetual clock, but it's a fake perpetual. I'm all, I mean, it's a real perpetual clock, but in, in theory, this would spin back and forth and it would function to uh, make the clock go. This, I think, is a uh, quartz version. Yeah, it's a cheap knockoff. But, you know, that's essentially what it does, back and forth and back and forth. We had one when I was a kid. Hey, look, it's a light bulb terrarium. And the little, I don't know if that's real inside. It's probably plastic. Hmm. Kind of cute. Cool, though. These are sort of mid-century looking. Two for $19. That's a big chunk of wood probably worth it just for the cost of lumber right now. You could build your house out of wooden statues. That's a funny banister you have. Yes, it's a bunch of wooden carved statues, a bunch of heads. <laughs> but those look 1950s-ish to me, 50s or 60s. I've got that sort of look. Okay, let's keep looking. That was a wash basin. Is it old? Is it new? It is... I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this is a replica. It doesn't feel like it's the right uh, density of material. Usually the old stuff feels like almost hollow. But, you know, if you want that antique look in your house, why not? You get something like that, pretty cheap. Toys and puzzles, Lego blocks. Oh, it's not real Lego. It's the, well, it's little kid Lego, it's like Duplo. It's not the same. But I guess for six bucks, that's a good deal for somebody, for a giant bin of, if you got a little one. But finding real Lego is like the equivalent of family jewels or uh, silverware used to be or whatever. It's like nobody ever wants to sell their actual Lego sets anymore. Prized possession. School desk. You never had to sit in these. Hmm. Yeah, ours are less comfortable. You're less comfortable than this? Yeah, you would hit, but when I was in school even, they still had a little hole here. And you, do you know what the hole was for? Uh, was it for a pump, maybe? Nope, it was for an inkwell. Huh. And this was your pen rest, yeah. obviously, but you would have a little inkwell here. So I'm sure many people watching at home remember sitting in a school desk and having an inkwell. I don't think we had the wooden ones like that when I was in school, or at least I can't remember it, but. I feel bad for anyone who was left-handed and had to sit in there. Oh, yeah. People weren't left-handed back in the 50s. <laughs> 
Actually, your grandpa was left-handed and they used to tell him that uh, he had to start to learn to write with his right hand. They thought it was, you know, devilish or bad if you were left-handed. <laughs> but he was left-handed. This was here last time. What is their asking price anyway? $279. Eventually this will go down to a reasonable price, but you know, little rocker pedal on there. I'm sure you could make that work again. Nice little antique piece. But uh, not something we need for a couple hundred bucks just to sit at our store. We're already pretty full as it is. Okay. Hey, well, I can't go in there and not buy something. I bought another bag of watches. Why the heck not? There's a couple old mechanicals in here and I think a fake Rolex. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you got to support them at least anyway a bit. So, uh, okay, let's go to the auction now and see how things are going. Okay, let's see. What did I get? A bag of generic watches. Well, there's a Mickey Mouse watch in there. $20 for the whole bag. It's official Disney. Yeah, Japanese movement. Okay, so it's probably a little bit older. I could get a... Uh, Crystal's got a bit of damage on it, but there's a Mickey Mouse watch. This is why I bought it in the first place. That's a nice little mechanical watch. Bomba Super Deluxe. It's probably not like a really high-end watch, but it is working and it is wind up. It's mechanical. So that's probably, you know, with a with a better strap or with a strap on there, probably like a $40, $45 retail. So kind of double your money on the bag. I did see one in here that said Rolex, and of course I'm not expecting it to be real. Oh, that's a, that's a Skagen watch, or Skagen, I can never say it right, but these were actually quite expensive watches. They're known for being fairly slim. That's a decent watch. Okay, maybe I lucked out with this bag. Mm, little quartz watches. Okay, I'm going to try and find that replica Rolex in here and see. Quartz. Fossil. Oh, there it is. I see it right there. It's a replica ladies Rolex. <laughs> Rolex Osterizer. It sounds like footwear. It's not an oyster. Is it an automatic? Let's see. Let me give it a little shake. No, it's not even a good replica. The good replicas have actual automatic movements in them. But, you know, it looks like a Rolex. Anyway, little bag of watches kind of fun to go through and sometimes you know i i think i gave jason a watch that came out of one of these bags he wears it every day you know like these sport watches and stuff are still fine that one's working actually the battery's still okay in it i think but we'll set that aside it's auction time we have to bring the boxes of the other die cast cars that i'm not going to sell at the store in and get them ready for sale see the gates over there yeah. I was talking to your mom. I said, they're going to be auctioning off acreage gates. Those are pretty pretty snazzy. But uh, she thought that she didn't like little spikes on the top. Right. Oh my God, I could cover them up. Cut them we could put little uh, ping pong balls on top of each spike. That'd be classy. Okay, let's grab these boxes and head in. This entire bay is all full of stuff that's going to be going through the August 21st monster sale. And look at them all. Nosferatu and Ghost Rider and Buffy, Vlad the Impaler. All of these are 12 inch, really highly detailed figures. Um, those are all getting ready to go. These are all Walking Dead figures in the boxes here. Those are all getting ready to go. And you can see they started putting their lot numbers on, which means uh, before long, pictures will be up and online. Saw Crypto Kitty like a freaky baby. Anyway, we decided to add a little bit of die cast in the mix here, which Steven is getting put away. They can come forward a bit more so people can see him. Like kind of right near the front edge. There you go. Thank you, Steven. And there's a little variety of them right there. These are all the extras that kind of make sense since it's kind of a toy and collectible sale. Last time I was in, I brought in all the Hellboy figures. Ron Perlman, I think is the actor's name that played Hellboy. He's also in a Beauty and the Beast TV series, which my mom used to watch like crazy <laughs> back in the 80s. You talking to me? Scarface. The Crow. Anyway, there's so much cool stuff. 
John Wayne Gacy. I was like, why is there a clown in here? That's not, and I'm like, oh, that's John Wayne Gacy. That is creepy. Sometimes uh, reality is scarier than fiction. All this stuff, all these paint your own zombie models. Quite big too, over a foot tall. Giant castle going on over here with Dracula in it. Big diorama. Look way up and I'll call Rusty. And then bite him on the neck. <laughs> That's a Canadian reference. I don't know if anybody else can remember the Friendly Giant. This uh, is a beautiful old barber's chair. It had kind of a creepy look. I actually bought it at auction and then I thought, well, why take it back to the store? We can just run it through auction again. But look at the nice detail on here. All this intricate uh, carving and inlay. Really nice old piece of furniture. And uh, really just needs upholstery. Unless you like that uh, creepy sort of look, then you could leave it the way it is. But, you know, that must have been pulled fresh out of somebody's barn. Anyway, it's a neat piece. And certainly not something I've, I've never had one that old before. I think it goes well with all the monster stuff. You ready to go, kiddo? Yes, I am. Okay, I gotta feed the lad, put some food in his belly. In the meantime, we wait for all this stuff to come up for sale August 21st. All these little dioramas, you know, creepy statues. These were professionally painted by a special effects company. Like, the guy probably spent, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars getting this stuff professionally airbrushed and done. Kind of a shame some of it's going through auction like this, but. Uh, we also did these box lots with, you know, paint your own figures and model pieces and stuff. Lots of stuff to go. Creepy zombies and medusas and all sorts of neat things. But... Is that a mallet and a wooden stake? Uh, yeah, that's a vampire kill kit, you know, in case a vampire happens to come through. Somebody order a steak? I used that joke before, but look, there it is again. Yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff, including... <laughs> they were joking at the auction. They said, instead of saying, I pity the fool, he'd say, I pity the ghoul, because he's surrounded by monsters. Even Mr. T might be a little concerned with what's going on around him. What? <laughs> he might be a little concerned. Frankenstein's monster and all these other guys are hanging out near him. But cool selection. Some of my favorites were probably, uh, if I was to keep any for myself in this horror genre, it would be Ash from Evil Dead. Just because of the, it was essentially a comedy horror movie and the the writing was you know just so goofy um that uh it was a cult classic that film anyway uh bruce campbell in his smart outfit and his evil outfit and i don't know there's another one around here somewhere oh there he is down here with his night hand and chainsaw and again real cloth and everything moves super cool okay let's go eat some food so that's it now we sit and wait for the next auction to go through as this never-ending ebb and flow of stuff coming in out of our store <laughs> keeps going on and thanks for watching today's episode i'm off to have lunch with steven and um try to enjoy the rest of my day because it is actually my day off um so i'm gonna go and see the rest of the family soon here so you guys have a wonderful day we'll see you all soon and bye for now